<laughs> Good morning, my friend. Happy Monday to you. Yeah, happy Monday too. And a happy Monday indeed when you come on because you always have the good energy that you come with. So I appreciate that so much. And as Omari said, we're clearing the air a little bit here. There were some great things that happened over the past weekend. I know that I was participating in the Kwanzaa Awards. And, and you know, we, we've been talking about Kwanzaa Awards and I'm going to be able to do a full recap on who won um, each category of the awards. But just the idea that now the principles of Kwanzaa are embodied in our, our work mm -hmm. in community mm -hmm. and then being uplifted in community. Amazing organizations yeah. that were nominated and that became finalists. Amazing folks that won individuals and organizations alike. And it was a showing from people across the country and even internationally. So this may be something that grows into a, a really big deal. And I just know that you're so steeped in community. How does it feel to just know that there's now another outlet of ways that we get to celebrate each other's great work in the community? Well, I mean, this is another example of why Black media matters. Right, is because we get to continue to create platforms for our culture, our community, our convictions to be celebrated and uplifted and amplified. And then black media can come in and undergird it and make sure that it's not just a moment in time, but it continues to build towards a broader movement. And in our community in particular, where there's such a small percentage of black people that still live in the city of Seattle, but in King County at large, it's imperative that we drive that stake deep into the ground and we hold our ground and continue to build presence even if we're not able to live in the city, we can still bring ourselves back to the city and celebrate what it means to be black in these spaces. Yeah, you know what? You're absolutely right, Sean. And, and you know, you, you were just talking about you attending something yeah. too that was phenomenal. And, and this is why it's important for us to be able to uplift it. Tell us all about it. Yeah, um, shout out to Eddie Purpose and Progress Pushers. They're a nonprofit in the Federal Way community, but they have this, uh, this, this program where they help young people create albums. And there's these young people who are creating their own rap albums, super dope. And um, I, I was messing with Eddie because I was like, you're just doing this because you want to live out your rap star dreams and you want to like live vicariously through these young people. He even featured on a couple of the presentations. But what was so beautiful is they create this really unique safe space for young people to explore their own creativity. And as they do that, like these young people, not all of them are super skilled lyricists, right? Not all of them know how to write out a beat, but that's not the point. The point is, is all of them are learning what it means to create and to create from an imaginative place, absent of a critique that would prevent you from exploring what's possible. Mm -hmm. And when you're able to create without that negative narrative saying, well, I can't do this and I can't do that and I'm not good enough here and it's not gonna sound right, without all of those narratives, the freedom that that unlocks in other areas of your life is so profound. And to watch the young people perform, to be present for their graduation, and just to soak up the energy in that space was transformative. So shout out to Eddie Purpose and the Progress Pushers team. And you guys are doing great, incredible work and really creating the space for young people in our region to see themselves as possibilities and not problems. You know what? This is what it really excites me is when I get to learn of a new initiative, a new program, a new organization, energy that for me that I didn't know about. Right. And I've heard of progress pushers. And so just learning more about them, even as you're talking. But before that, too. It's exciting. You know, when we are able to now have an addition to this amazing plethora of black unity and black work and excellence out here in community, I always find that it, it serves me so well because I think it really takes all of us to bring our brilliance to the table, to do these unique, innovative yeah. approaches to connecting with not just youth, but people in our community in general. But that to me is where this kind of village mentality yeah. comes from. And you're talking about the federal way area. You know, I, I'm, I'm yeah. now, a federal way homeowner just but yes. just bought a home Congratulations. right out there thank you so so for me it's really exciting to know that right out there in federal way where there's a 14 percent population yeah. of black families yeah. that we actually have black organizations and individuals like eddie out there to do something really phenomenal for our people yeah and like i was saying that's not the only news to come out of federal way this past week and trust me i love south king county i go hard for south king county <laughs> i love all my city seattle folks and I also know that most of you think the only thing south of the airport is Portland, <laughs> right? But there's a whole bunch of cities out there and many of your relatives now live there. You should acquaint yourself yeah. accordingly. <laughs> but in, in Federal Way, um, the council had on their, on their agenda. So um, as a collaboration between collective justice, creative justice and community passageways, Choose 180 co-created the framework for this thing called Restorative Community Pathways about a year and a half or so ago. Mm -hmm. And some brilliant young leaders, filled in that framework, put some meat on those bones, and rolled out this program. 
And as it's begin to roll out, essentially it's creating an alternative to the criminal legal system. So that way young people immediately get access to community instead of criminal convictions. And it's not just supporting the young people who have been accused of causing harm, but also the young people who have been harmed and making sure they're both engaged in a restorative practice to be made whole. Now that scares people who don't have a lens or a context for what that actually means. And when you talk about communities in South King County, several of the mayors wrote a letter to the prosecuting attorney's office saying, we don't want this in our community. We want tough on crime. I'm paraphrasing, but in essence, that's what they said. So boy, did the community show up and show up in a big way at the Federal Way City Council meeting last week on Tuesday to see the leadership of community passageways really rallying folks together in Freedom Project and collective justice and creative justice and all the many bodies that were there testifying on behalf of what our young people truly need. Like that level of presence for black folks in that space, it was hilarious. There was this moment where one of the gentlemen who were testifying, who had been, been lived in the community for a long time, a white guy said, how many of you are actually from Federal Way? And then almost everybody raised their hand that were in that space because what he was supposing was that these are a bunch of people coming from other communities to talk about what's best for our community. And, and it was also helpful to enlighten them that we know that South King County is, is where young people migrate to and from and, 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 and they're not like statically living in one community or another. And so just the ability to bring that wisdom into that space and to listen to the many black voices that amplified our collective effort of seeing young people as possibilities and not problems. Like those things over the past week, man, that gave me life. In the midst of all the other crazy that's going on, like moments like that absolutely give me life. I mean, you just, I, chills all through my body because honestly, that is exactly what I know Federal Way needs, right? Ultimately, the ideas around how I've experienced council meetings and this kind of antiquated thought of we know what's best for us because we've been here so long, my, 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 energy that I bring to federal way into public spaces it, when I'm engaging myself in the civic process is to identify that the demographics of federal way have changed dramatically. Yeah. And what is the city doing from a city perspective yeah. and yeah. an effort to really acknowledge those new voices. So the fact that this happened is huge. And I will say that, you know, months ago, maybe a, a, just a couple months before you guys were able to convene like this, there was a council meeting regarding, you know, community community oversight of policing. And unfortunately, that resonating voice of black people and what we know is best wasn't present. But there were several folks on there that were like, look, we are trying to scream from the rooftops yeah. to get you to understand that we need new approaches and that we need community oversight. Of course, a lot of folks on the call, kind of like that guy asking that question mm -hmm. and presuming that, oh, you guys are not from yeah. federal yeah. way. A lot of folks are saying that's not what our community needs. We, we, we know we support our police. We want them to do their jobs. But the idea is that we're now starting to really break down um, some of those antiquated ideologies that I think keep a city kind of, you know, not really moving forward progressively. Yeah. Federal Way has an opportunity to change that. It's great to hear that, Sean. Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it needs to be regional, right? Yeah. I mean, like, I, I'm a child of South King County. I lived in Kent. I lived in Federal Way. I lived in Burien. I lived in Des Moines. Only place I didn't really live was Auburn, mm. right? And so I, anywhere that 174 would go, shout out to everybody <laughs> that grew up out there. Shout out to all the Metro Transit bus riding young people that know how to hold your transfer right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, anywhere that 174, 132, 130, 166 would take me, I would go. I know y'all got your sevens and all the, I'm just making sure I'm, I'm, I'm creating space for the folks that grew up where I grew up to hold their own. <laughs> You know, I remember the SeaTac Mall before it was the Commons. Yeah. I remember putting quarter after quarter into tilt and wasting my money on that Ninja Turtle game, right? <laughs> I remember riding my bicycle to the old box movie theater and watching Batman. I remember watching New Jack City in the in the in this in the SeaTac Mall when I was like nine years old. I don't know who bought me a ticket to see that as a nine-year-old. That's a whole nother conversation. But the point being is th there was black people in Federal Way before. There's more black people there now. And regionally, we have to adjust our perspective if we're going to embrace the new collective of voices that are really manifesting themselves in these pockets of our community. Mm -hmm. And I think being intentional on those calls to action, making sure that we know how we can show up, because I think black folks in particular are really understanding how transformative it can be when we get involved civically, when our voices begin to amplify in these council halls all of a sudden they can't make these decisions absent of considering who else is impacted. And, and it's powerful. And so 
yes, let's continue to engage, not just in federal way, but throughout South County. We saw some of the craziness happen in Kent recently with the whole, the, the assistant chief or something like that with the Nazi insignia oh, no. and then and then the, the, the camp mayor is surprised that there's an outlet the out, that there's the outlash in the community and that they don't want that officer on the force that's just because they're not in touch with the voices of those who are there now and really deeply rooted into the narrative of the antiquated past yeah. but we got someplace we got to go and we got to get there together which means it's going to require all of us regardless of our background social economic status the way we identify racially or gender or orientation like it's going to require a collective us to move towards a progressive future if we're going to honor all of us you, you know you're absolutely right this is why my moniker is always see yourself as part of the solution yeah, because on. collectively and, and and this means not just those that are heavily impacted right yeah. and and i think you're so right when we talk about engaging black families black boys out there in south king county the idea is that there is a huge opportunity here when we talk about civic engagement i just had a meeting last week where young people are coming up with a model for how they can literally have territories target territories and go back to door knocking safely with their mask on everything else you know making sure you know they don't have COVID as mm -hmm. they try to mm -hmm. approach people's doors but the idea is that door knocking is still one of the main ways that we get people engaged it goes beyond voting yeah. it goes beyond these election processes it is about being able to show up at a council meeting yeah. right it, and one of the things I appreciate uh, that I think is kind of a, a good byproduct of this pandemic is the legislative sessions being open yeah. on Zoom mm -hmm. and people being able to contribute in a way that does not mean that they have to take a full day off of work to go down to Olympia, right. drive, get childcare, all of that, but that they can just say, look, I'm holding my baby right here, but I want this legislative yes. body to hear what I have to yes. say about this issue. That to me is, I get so excited about it because ultimately we are so much better off when we all join in and when we participate. And so I love hearing that there's now young people at the forefront of putting the meat and bones on this progressive, you know, energy and idea to really ensure that our young folks are have a different directions that they can take regarding criminal justice. This is important. Yeah, absolutely. If that's not good news, I don't know what good news really is. <laughs> I appreciate that hashtag this morning. Like whoever tweeted that out, like shout out to the folks on the team that hashtag today seg the segment good news. Yeah, yeah. No, you always bring the good news, Sean. I thank you so much for joining me right now. And, you know, always, I, I know if we have some time here, Omari probably will talk to you about some other things, but I got to give you the opportunity to look right there and let folks know how they can support, you know, not just Choose 180, but some of the other initiatives going on out there. How can people really tap in yeah. to all this? work that you have going on and those around you yeah well first and foremost um family like you may may or may not be able to tell my energy isn't what it typically is um my wife is out of town supporting her, my in-laws her parents she's been gone for a couple weeks going to be gone for a couple more weeks it's difficult out there it's difficult here so if you could lift us up in your prayers i really appreciate it that would be paramount for me um you could tap in with me individually at grace not guilt on twitter possibilities over problems on, uh, on Instagram. Um, you can also find the cause at, at I choose 180, wherever, you know, whatever, whatever platform you, na you navigate or use. But like, I appreciate y'all and Converge, man, you all are my family. And it has been a really difficult couple of weeks and being able to mark this on the calendar to know that I get to come and celebrate in the space with you really helps me move forward. So thank you so very much, Trey. And, and oh, I look forward to being able to share space with you in a minute and Converge family, know that you are the energy that's infusing me to push forward today. So I appreciate all of y'all tapping in and sharing the stream. Wow. I mean, honestly, I will definitely be sending uh, healing vibes to you, your family, your wife, her family. Uh, this is something that is hitting us all, you know, uh, over this kind of break of being away from Converge. Uh, so many people in my family got sick and it, it was one of those things where you just rally around everyone yeah. and really envelop folks in love. So just know you guys will definitely be in my meditations and in my thoughts and, and prayers for you. I appreciate you, sis. Absolutely. You guys, uh, Sean Good always bringing the good news and, and I'm excited for him to be able to sit down with Omari even for a little bit. Uh, I know me and Sean, we can go all day long, but I am so glad that you guys are joining us on this journey. Stay tuned after this short break, you guys. Omari is coming back to the set. You're watching The Morning update show in the depths of belize the travelers come across the waters harvesting with their hands learning of resilience rooted deep in the lands culture thriving 
like a fire ablaze, sizzling with a pop and a chop, sharing its ways. Knowledge simmers and grinds into the hearts and minds, cutting away from the surface stories and colonial lies, boiling it down, breaking its shell as the truth pours out and gets plated collectively with love. Spooned into bowls, feeding the soul. Garifuna, alive and strong at Palmetto Grove. Hey y'all, T-Dub here letting you know about another art funding opportunity. For Culture Recovery funding for individuals is available now and here's what you need to know to apply. Are you a cultural producer who has been impacted by the pandemic? If you answered yes, but what is a cultural producer? Well, you are a cultural producer if your work, paid or unpaid, is dedicated to creating cultural experiences in any discipline or at any stage of your career. Some examples include exhibit designers, museums educations, archivists, restoration professionals, curators, history researchers, artists, of course, and more. In understanding that grant language can sometimes feel exclusive to specific people, using terms like cultural producer is one of the ways for culture seeks to broaden its scope of applicants. In other words, this funding is for you. And look, the application fatigue is real. I get it, they get it but the Four Culture staff is here to walk you through it. They have grants from $1,000 to $12,000, so please don't miss out. The deadline to apply is Wednesday, February 2nd. Head to fourculture.org slash recovery to get information on virtual group workshops, application support, language translation, and more. We invite you to be our guest at Disney's Beauty and the Beast. It's a tale as old as time in a brand new production by the Fifth Avenue Theater. Return to the magic of live theater with one of the most enchanting musicals of all time. Disney's Beauty and the Beast at the Fifth, January 12th to February 6th. Tickets at fifthavenue.org. All right, everybody, welcome back to a morning update show. And yeah, I guess people do tune in for news and information. Man, man. Sometimes we give these people too much space in our head, but it's important to talk about. Back here with Sean Good. All right, Sean. So I, I mentioned on top of the show is that you and Choose 180 have, have had a close relationship, actually a partnership, I should say, with the King County Prosecutor's Office, Dan Satterberg. Been there, what, four terms, 16 years as a prosecutor. Just announced that he's not going to run for re-election. How does that, how do you think that impacts the landscape over there? Well, you know, I think what, what Dan did really well and this is the picture that comes to mind when I think about Dan Satterberg. I think about a prosecutor stand, starting at, a, at, at the front of a race and Dan got out super fast and he was incredibly progressive at the beginning of his time and tenure. And what he did in 2011 in partnering with community to roll out what has become Choose 180 has been transformative on so many different levels. But what it did was it inspired other prosecutors to believe they could do the same thing. And he, he didn't keep up that same pace. He didn't keep up that same cadence. And there's been other moments where we pushed upon the prosecuting attorney's office to take a more progressive lens towards what our community needs. And instead of continuing to strive and reach forward into what can be, there was these moments of falling back into the narrative of what is. And I will say, despite all that, whenever I've needed to reach out to Dan, he's always replied, whether it was a phone call, an email, he's always been available. We've disagreed privately, we've disagreed publicly, and he's always continued to come to the table. And for all those things, I really appreciate the work that we've been able to do together and the fact that there's an opportunity for a new prosecutor to come into office to begin to lead into this generation and live into the principles and hopes and aspirations that the community I reflect have for what justice can look like for all of us in King County. Yeah. And by the way, I, I used to interview him a lot. I'd always bring up choose 180. I always had nice things to say about you. 
<laughs> All right. So, a few other things then. Well, man, well, hold on. Well, let's say this, though. That is a very pivotal seat. Yeah. Especially for the work that you do. Yeah. Are you hearing any names? <laughs> so, yes, I'm hearing names. Um, I, the name that is publicly out there now is Lisa Mannion. And Lisa's been in the prosecutor's office for as long as I can recall and was right there in the beginning when the work of Choose 180 began as well with Dan. And she worked closely with Doug Wheeler and Donnie Griffin and Alan Belton to create the work that I had the privilege to steward today. So I'm very familiar with Lisa and, and I'm grateful that she's putting her, her name um, forward and, and as we begin to search for our future prosecutor. I do know there's other people who are interested and I'm excited for them to step up and publicly declare as well because I think more than ever, what used to be a down ballot sort of insignificant bubble is much more relevant in the season that we're in now. Uh, we see people taking prosecutor races seriously. We see what happened here with the, the city attorney in Seattle. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that King County at large probably takes a different lens than the city of Seattle does when they consider what justice needs to look like. And because of that, I think it's imperative that we not only are putting forth candidates that are reflective of our values, but we're intentionally educating the county at large of what restorative justice really looks like. Because I think for most people, when they hear it, they think, well, we're just letting people get away with doing bad things. When in reality, what we're saying is that we've historically policed, prosecuted, incarcerated, and that hasn't actually done anything to transform the behavior of those who have been impacted, whether they've been accused or been a victim. And so there has to be a different approach that can move us forward instead of relying on the antiquated methods of our past. And I think that we can, we can elevate candidates like that, but as much as we elevate candidates that have these progressive platforms, we have to simultaneously educate the community at large. Yeah. I take exception with progressive, not with you, but with progressive, just in the sense that black people have been led by progressive leaders here for the last 30, 40 years, and we've been in constant decline in every category. So just just putting on that. I mean, you know, progressive stuff worked for white people, man. Well, you know what I'm saying? Well, well, like, and, and, I can't and, knock it. Like, and, 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 and oh, I think I think like <laughs> I think that as progressive as we've been in, uh, in, in, in word. Right. And I, yeah. I regularly say that the North, indeed. The, I, I regularly say that the, the, the Northwest is the bastion of faux progressives, right? Because yeah. when it shows up on their front yard, then all of a sudden their progressives become much more conservative and they begin to defend that, that property well, line that they hold so tightly. Somebody to. need to come up, either make that word work or we need a, a new word for when it comes to black people. Because, yeah. man, you know what? All these guys been talking all oh, progressive, this, this, that, whatever. Look what it took. Governor Inslee just now overturned this, that, that initiative, man. You know, look, look how long he's been in office. Yeah. You know what I'm saying about uh, a friend? action look how long he's been in office yeah, yeah. you know it was wild he went to ingram you know what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> i mean so when people talk and it took pressure it 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 took the congressional black it, it took yeah. my uh, uh auntie auntie maxine was getting yeah. ready to be going off up here yeah and yeah. the congressional black caucus was getting ready to go off up here and governor Inslee avoided a time bomb by go ahead and changing that uh the what i forget the exact name but by making that change, yeah. the Department of yeah. Justice and everybody was getting ready to come down here and come down on Inslee's head, and Auntie Maxine was getting ready to be here. But Inslee's been saying he's progressive the whole time he's right. been in office. Right. So that's when, when people are like, oh, progressive. I'm like, well, yeah. and, 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 and oh, what I, what I think, what I'd say to that is this, is what we've done too long is we've said, well, we've elected the progressive candidate. Now you go do your thing, right? You go do the progressive things that you said you were going to do on your campaign trail. What we're getting better at as a community is much of what Trey and I were speaking about earlier is not only accepting the fact that you have this campaign platform and this is what you say you're going to do, but we're going to stand in the halls and hold you accountable to doing what it is you committed to doing and, and do that in a way where we're not just uplifting black community as a monolith because we know we certainly are not. There's many things that we disagree with. But one thing we can tie ourselves together on is that these 400 plus years of injustice have bound us to a particular class that hasn't allowed us to, to, to transcend and begin to play in the spaces of white dominant culture. And as long as we sit like in that cast, right, then, then, then we're going to continually bump up against the ceiling of these things until we break through. And we can't break through unless we break through. And there's not a progressive platform that's going to do that. I'll say this, bro. 
progressiveness works for white people, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They reap the benefit of it every day. And it's like it's all good. A few things don't work for them. Hey, didn't get a green space. Didn't get this or that. Maybe want less cars. But progressiveness, work, their system works for them. So if their candidate, when they do elective, they do deliver for them, for the white white people who benefit from progressivism, man. And I'm just saying, I don't know what the answer is. Yeah. All I'm saying is, is like, you're right. We got to keep people accountable. Two things real quick. We got we got like two minutes I'm just saying, Let's come up with a new word then. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll workshop that thing. We go workshop we'll, we'll workshop that. that thing and we'll come up with a new word. I mean, that's why, but that's why also, you know what I'm saying? We, we always print people beforehand. It's like, look, man, don't be coming in our studio talking all this BIPOC. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. If it's for black folks, say it's black, black for folks. anybody yeah. else, it's whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't say black. BIPOC media matters here. It says black media matters. And all my, my, my rainbow family know where my heart's at. Yeah. And so just like with BIPOC, we're going to yeah. come up with something. But listen, two things, man. One, um, man, I saw that your wife was watching. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we got to leave some space for that, for sure. But also, you know, I want to give you the last good word here because, you know, you, we've always got something phenomenal and uplifting to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, my wife has been reading this book recently, and she knows what a huge, um, a huge fan I am of paying attention to what occurs in nature and how what occurs in nature uh, mirrors what's possible for our shared humanity. And particularly when it comes to the monarch butterfly, because it's really unique migration cycle. But I'm not going to talk through that, but I will talk through something that she taught me just yesterday. And it's that as the monarch butterfly migrates from the south to the northeast, there is a particular part where it goes over Michigan and it swerves upwards. The whole, all of the, the monarch butterflies take a huge swerve up and go right back down. But there's nothing there today. But the reason why they had this upward movement before they go back to this decline is because historically there was a mountain there. And embedded into the DNA of these monarch butterflies is a historical memory of this mountain that once existed as it migrated back to the Northeast. If a monarch butterfly can hold that in their DNA, what is it that we hold in ours if we get to the point where we're no longer masking ourselves and what culture calls us now? but we get to the core of our being and begin to really dissect the intentionality of our creation. Because I imagine that if we were to submit to ourselves in the same way that the monarch butterfly submits to its call, imagine what we could create by benefiting from the pain and the pleasure, the losses and the victories of our ancestors. Sean Good, everybody. Man, listen, we up against it. Hey, uh, Sama, can we exit with Shana? You got it in there. All right. Well, good stuff. Um, we're gonna get out of here. Thank you, Sean. Good. Man, thank, thank you, you so brother. much for for joining us, man. As usual, and I can't wait to see you again. Yeah. You know, next time is Valentine's Day. Yes, it is Thanks Valentine's next Day. Time we connect, you know, we you know I'm gonna be talking about you. <laughs> you bring it, bring it all the love. We're gonna get out of here, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna leave you with Shayna Shepard with um, the song Hope that she recorded right here, man, and it's getting some traction out there. Um, and we're really proud of her and really proud of the song and actually directed by Salman. Good stuff. On that note, I want to remind you, go forward right here, Sean. There you go. See, the director's like, good shot. Go forward in your purpose. Go forward in your humanity until tomorrow at 11 a.m. Peace.